Hey guys. So right out of the gate, one thing I immediately liked about this chapter is that Oda is is addressing the fears Sanji has about becoming more like his siblings and how he's worried about just basically losing everything, which of course we as the readers, we basically know that's not going to happen because uh, obviously for plot, but even as as Reiju had said, even as as Reiju had said so plainly, so plainly back in Whole Cake. Sora, their mother, had managed to save Sanji. So even if he gains like the the powers, the powers he has that that his siblings has, Sanji's humanity will still remain. Now, honestly, I am still a little iffy on the whole idea in itself, but at least this chapter is showing how these like changes are affecting Sanji emotionally and psychologically. Like, you can tell that he hates his family so much that just the idea of even putting on the suit again is frightening. To him now, and assuming that th this is the route Oda's going with it, I do like how this this is setting up a little like mini arc for Sanji in this in this fight to come to terms with and just accept the fact that he is a Vin Smoke because th that's kind of the biggest things that, that Sanji has yet to overcome is just kind of letting go of the past with his family and 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 how just he he has this very unhealthy rejection of them like he, he pretty much it's one of those things where or, or he, he can't accept the fact that, that that he's that he's a vin smoke and, and and just and just not and just not associate him being a vin smoke with with the rest of his family like he it's one of those things where he has wanted to t at least take some pride in his heritage i think and this is and this is i think this is i think setting that up for that um but okay let's get into the big event of this chapter which is hawkins versus killer and honestly, up to this point, I've not been a big fan of either of these characters, and it's not because they're terribly written or anything, but it's just that they've always just kind of been there. That they've been there in the background of the story up to this point. And even here in Wano, despite the tragedy of Killer having eaten a smile fruit, it still just felt like an event that happened and will be addressed later on. And uh, what and, and Hawkins up to this point was just on this weird power trip that so much on this weird power trip that he felt like he was on the knife edge of becoming a mustache twirler but with that's but with all that being said this chapter definitely addressed both of their characters in a very meaningful way and get, gave me a lot more to think about with these with these characters for, for example with killer the, the moment like the moment he made his appearance in the story i immediately knew he was kid number two and that is the role he has served at this point. But between having eaten the smiled fruit in order to save Kid and this fight with Hawkins, where he's begging Hawkins to free Kid, like it truly shows Killer's unwavering loyalty to, to Kid and to his crew. Like at the end of the day, like like the one he he's the most loyal to is his captain. He, he's he's the one. Kid is the one he most respects. But that the. But that th th he truly was. But but also we also we get even more in depth into that, and that he like killer in this moment truly was and is willing to die if it means Kid can fight on. Like it's it, it's th this is a fight that shows Killer's relationship with Kid is truly one of ride or die. Like it's it, the, the relationship is is so visceral and so just genuine that they'll fight together, they'll die together, and if one of them has to die for the other to move on. They'll do it gladly. Like th that's the kind of relationship that, in some ways, truly encapsulates One Piece to me. M maybe even like maybe even more so than the relationship among the Straw Hats, because with Kid and Killer, their relationship just from, you can tell is so emotionally raw that you can't help but get behind what 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 they're all about. Like it's it's just a genuine just 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 friendship and loyalty amongst um, amongst crewmates. And I just am a captain and crew member, and I really love that. Um, <clears throat> of course, on the other side of that coin, we have Hawkins, who, frankly, I thought was even I thought even less of than Killer. But how we do, ex but how we do explore at least a little bit more about how I like how we do explore just a little bit more about how just like like with a poo, a lot of, a lot of this more violent and condescending persona that that that, that, that pretty much that that Hawkins that Hawkins has adopted and we've and that we've seen throughout Wano has it does come from a very real place of just fear and just 
um, almost kind of self self loathing now, and just how he, how how much of a broken man he really is. Like he, how he had like ultimately after, after he, like when you really look at Hawkins in this chapter, he had not only ultimately lost the will to believe the four emperors could be opposed, just as Apu did, but in his case. You can tell it was more more than just losing the will to oppose the emperors, and it's more fair to say that Hawkins flat out had a psychological break from the experience. Like after after the whole encounter with Kaido, everything he believed, everything he thought he could avoid or overcome with his divinations, was rendered completely inconsequential through Kaido's sheer power. Yet ironically enough, it's through those same divinations that led to his defeat, and and through defeat. I think Hawkins might be able to see a little more clearly, because up until this point, Kaido's presence in itself has had made Hawkins into just a broken shell of a man, or, or and just made him disbelieve anything he had thought before. But now that he has been defeated, maybe this will give him some semblance of perspective, and just he and just. That that, that 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 maybe just maybe if 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 he believes once if he if he believes in himself once more if he believes in his power his his ability to his ability to fight just maybe he he just maybe he 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 pretty much will he he pretty much will will he he will be able to he will be able to move forward and 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 move beyond that whole idea that the that the four emperors are are are, indis, are indisputably the rulers of the of the Grand Line, and that that they can't be defeated. Like that's he 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 needs to become the man he once was again, and in in that sense, I, I again I like how how we did get a little bit more of a psychological in depth look at at Hawkins because yeah, as, he was he was definitely one of the characters that I didn't hate, but he was just always kind of there, honestly. Like honestly, even more than a poo, frankly. Like, but, but a poo and Hawkins especially have that kind of thing of. Like feeling like characters are only there, but I I think I liked Pooh even more than Hawkins. Like Hawkins, kind of was just again Hawkins was just kind of there, but I'm glad we got this more psychological, in-depth look at Hawkins, like at just what Hawkins had, what Hawkins believed after the whole situation with Kaido and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> Now, on a te- on a technical level, though, that, that's on the psychological, emotional level of the fight, though. Uh, on a technical level about the fight, though, in itself, one thing I loved about it is how Kid's mechanical arm came into play of how Killer ultimately defeated Hawkins. Because, as Killer said, Hawkins doesn't technically have a left arm. It's all mechanical. Meaning, he had literally nothing to lose and could easily replace it. Which, in that sense... <clears throat> It's kind of weird to say this, but by proxy, you could say that Shanks kind of, even though Killer ultimately was the one to defeat uh, to defeat Hawkins, you could say that Shanks kind of saved Kid because <clears throat> even though it <clears throat> even though it wasn't explicitly stated in the story, apparently Oda revealed at some point that Shanks was the reason for Kid's missing arm. So like apparently th- they did have an encounter at one point, and Shanks basically lopped off lopped off like kid's left arm so 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 yeah shanks might have so even if shanks had given kid the incentive even more of an incentive to go after him and kill him defeat him whatever but in this case kid does kind of owe shanks for that does kind of owe shanks for for this one as as well as he gave as as the mechan as the fact that he lost his arm to shanks did kind of give killer the opportunity to save kids so it's it, it's kind of this weird kind of like well it's kind of this weird whole whole pretty much l- looping scenario of of circumstances that that, that allowed Haw- that allowed hawkins to be defeated and yeah kid you, you, you pretty much kind of again you kind of owe shanks for that one uh but yeah guys that's all i got for this review if you enjoyed the video like comment subscribe i'm on twitter analyst crunch roll be sure to the notification bell hit the subscribe button and just share the video around guys dark night of me signing off Later, everyone.